Hi everyone, welcome to part 2 of Naper tutorial series. Few weeks back I made this Naper software tutorial video and I asked you guys if you want me to make more tutorial videos about this software Naper and many of you said yes. Because of that I am making this part 2 in which we are going to create laminar microstructure. I also make videos about crystal plasticity, finite element simulations and many other topics. Please check out this channel and give your support if you like the content. Now let's start with this video. Just to make things more interesting, we are not going to create just a laminar microstructure. We are going to create a microstructure in which some grains are laminar. So first we will create a regular microstructure as shown over here and then we will convert some grains out of these into a laminar structure as shown over here. We can choose specific grains which we want to convert into laminar structure. You can see in this example I chose these four grains to convert into laminar structure. We can specify the width of lamina and most important thing over here is we can choose different width for different grains. As in this example the width of lamina in this grain is different from width of lamina in this grain. In Naper you can individually control that as well. And finally we can specify the orientation of lamina. That also we can choose different orientations for different grain. In this grain laminates are stacked vertically and in this grain also laminates are stacked vertically but they are in different direction and in this grain they are not stacked vertically they are at some certain angle and finally we will mesh this microstructure to get this image. Now these are all the commands you will need to create all those three images. This second line is in continuation of this first line but it was going out of screen that's why I just represented it like this. Just one space over here and then after space you can start from here. Here there is not even a space so just start directly from here after this. Anyway that being said let me go through each command and explain you what it does. First we have to create this tessellation. To create this we will use this first command. We are using tessellation module, microstructure will have 10 number of grains and we are using option morpho. In this option morpho what we are defining is equivalent diameter and we are saying the equivalent diameter will follow a log normal distribution with this value as mean and this value as standard deviation. Similarly sphericity also has log normal distribution with mean and standard deviation. Sphericity defines how pointy our grains will be. Then this format will define the type of output files created. I am saying TEWS and ORI. TEWS will be our tessellation file and ORI file will give us Euler angles of grain orientations. We are not going to use those grain orientation in this video but you can plot pole figures using this grain orientation that we will cover in separate video in future. And finally slash O gives the name of output files. And once we create this tessellation the next command is just to visualize the tessellation and this slash data cell trs command this command define the transparency of your cells. So if you don't want transparent image you can just remove this command altogether. I am keeping it 50% transparent and this will be the name of our image. So first let's start the neighbor and do these two things. I created one folder and I am accessing that folder using this Ubuntu app. I explained this process in first tutorial. If you did not see that tutorial I highly recommend seeing that first. Now let's start with first tessellation. Because of morpho option it will take some time but still it is just 10 grains. It's done and you can see over here two files will be created. One is tessellation file and another is ORI file. If you open this file in notepad++ you will see values of grain orientation in terms of Euler angles. So we have 10 grains therefore 10 set of Euler angles. And in this tessellation file you will have all the information about microstructure. It is very important thing to understand how these files are structured. Let's visualize the results. This is the image file and this is the microstructure which we created. Now next thing is you have to create two files lamb normal and lamb width. The name doesn't matter you can name it anything. Now this is the example of lamb normal file. You can see lamb normal file will have orientations in which you want to stack up the laminar grains. Now we have 10 grains in our structure. 
Now in each grain, when we are creating the laminates, we have to define the direction perpendicular to that lamina. For example, in this first grain, I am defining 0, 1, 0, which means if we create laminates in first grain, the direction perpendicular to those laminates will be 0, 1, 0, which means positive y direction. So similarly, you have to define this normal direction for each grain. Doesn't matter if you want to convert that grain into laminar structure or not, but this just define it for all the grains. And then you have to define a lamb width file in which you will define the width of lamina in each grain. Let's say if you don't want to convert grain number one into laminar structure, then you can keep the lamina width at some very high value so that it will not affect the grain. And the grains which you want to convert, for example, this grain number four, for that you can define some lamina width which is smaller than that green. And you can see here for green number 5 I have defined some value which is different than this. So you can change the width of lamina over here. Let me actually show you these files. These are just plain files without any format. So this is lab normal file and this is lamb width file. For 10 number of grains, we can manually write these files. But if the number of grains are too many, like thousands, then you can't write these files manually. In that case, you have to write a short script in Python or MATLAB. I do it with MATLAB. And how to identify which grain is which means how to know the grain numbers of these individual grains. That also you can get the information from dot TEWS file. Therefore, as I said, it is very important to understand what is the structure of this .TEWS file. In .TEWS file, in polyhedron, you can see the grain number and you will see how many faces that grain has and what are the numbers of those faces. Then these numbers, you have to go up and check into faces tab. Here you will find details of face, every face, how many vertices it has and what are the name of vertices. And then if you go up into vertices tab, you will see the coordinates of vertices. And using these coordinates, you can identify the location of green. I know it is kind of tedious process, but once you get hang of it, it will get easier. And I would suggest MATLAB is the best tool for this. Now, once we create these two files, just save it in the same folder. I created those two files over here. And then we will use this second tessellation option. In this, we will add this lamellar option where our lamb width and lamb normal files will be as input and output files will be polycrystal underscore laminated. So let's do that. You can see each grain is having further tessellations. The next will be to visualize the second tessellations, which is polycrystal underscore laminated dot TWS file. And then you will get this file. And finally, to mesh this polycrystal, you have to use mesh module over here. This slash CL defines the relative element size. I'm using much smaller elements so that our laminas will get meshed correctly. And I'm defining mesh quality to be one, which means the mesh has to be perfect. And once you type this last command, again, remember there is no enter. There is just space over here. You will get this mesh image. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, please show your support by subscribing to this channel, which will give me motivation to create more educational videos like these. You can also go to channels playlist tab and here you can see all the videos with similar topics combined together. For example, let's say if you're interested in ANSYS tutorials, you can go to this ANSYS tutorial playlist and see all the videos from this playlist. All the codes and files which I use for these videos are also available for you to directly download from this channel's GitHub profile. The link of this profile is given in the description box below. If you have any questions, Please let me know in the comment section below and as always, thank you for watching.